Hey guys, Ape here, and today we are finally going to be continuing our Lightweight Java Game Library 3 tutorial. I know it's been a while, and uh, I addressed it in the live stream that I did, but anyways, we're going to be back, and we're going to be making more tutorials. I know this is like the third time I already said it, but hopefully we're back. So, yeah, I've been very busy uh, for the past month. Uh, I actually made a game, so that's what the main purpose, and also because of school is back, so... You know, the normal stuff, so. Anyway, so, uh, today we're gonna be adding, uh, batch rendering into ours, which won't make a difference graphics-wise, but will, uh, make a difference performance-wise when we have more of these cubes. So, um, yeah, let's get started. So, what we have right now is we should have a camera object with, um, that we can just move around, it's all fine, it's all dandy. And so today, what we're going to be doing is uh, we are going to be, um, uh, you know, making it better. So let's get out of here and we'll close this. So what we are going to be doing is we're going to be turning our old rendering system, as you can see here, it has three rendering functions. But this is inefficient right here because what happens is it binds the model, as you can see here, draws it, and then it unbinds it. But then what happens if you have a thousand of the same model of it, and then it just makes some unnecessary uh, innate, uh, binding and unbinding calls, which you don't need. So what this batch trending does is, is instead it has a list of in, uh, entities. And so you have like a thousand of one entity and a thousand of another. Then it goes through it all and it renders all the first entity or the first model and without doing all these uh, enable and disable calls and then after it's all rendered then it disables it uh, I'll show you what I mean in this diagram. Okay, so this is how batch rendering works. So say this is our uh, entity this little terrible rectangle I just drew here and say we have like a thousand of them so a thousand of them and so what happened with our current rendering system is it binds so I'm just gonna say it binds uh, then it renders, then it unbinds. As you can see, bind, render, unbind. And so this does this entire thing a thousand times, as you can see. So this actually makes it unnecessary because this is the same exact textured model. Why would we have to bind and unbind it a thousand times? It's just making unnecessary bind and unbind calls and wasting processing time. So what should happen, and this is what batch rendering does, is it binds the textured model, then it renders it a thousand times. So renders and it only does this a thousand times instead of doing this entire thing a thousand times. And then it unbinds it and then it goes on to the next one. So I'm going to add like another textured model. Say we have a circle and we have this a hundred times. So what happens is that it does this. But it binds this, renders it, and then unbinds. This is for the rectangle, and this is for the circle. And this does this a hundred times. So, of course, this makes some unnecessary bind calls. And so, for this one, it for the rectangle, uh, it binds it, renders the rectangle a thousand times, and unbinds it. Then, it binds the circle, renders this a hundred times, and then it unbinds it. And... I'm just going to have a line that separates it so it doesn't get confusing. And it does this for the circle. So this saves this because it cuts out the, doing the binding and unbinding 999 times and it only does it once. And for this one, 99 times. So it saves lots of processing time and should reduce lag for most machines. Okay, got it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of these two functions right here, the render model and the render texture model. Uh, they are useless right now because, first, our shader doesn't really work with it because it needs this. And, uh, yeah, so right now we have render model entity, and we are going to turn that into a batch renderer. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make a map. Okay, so what this map does is it basically provides an index for all the models to be, but... A map is like a 2D array of sorts, but with whatever object you want. So the first thing we need is private map 
and then in here we're gonna have our uh, first of all like our key for it which is going to be a textured model so it's going to use textured uh, models to um, uh, sort this and then uh, what is considered what is in these lists so it's going to be uh, a list of model entities so model entity and it has to be a list of them so I'm going to do list of model entity we're just gonna call this. Uh, let's just call it uh, map, or not hat, not map. Uh, entities. Let's call it entities. So and then we're just gonna say new map or new hash map, and then we're gonna obviously do that. So of course we need to import it all. Uh, boom. Uh, it's gonna be util list. So after we import it all, now we have ourselves a map. Okay, so after this, what we need to do is then we need to add a way to actually get entities into this map. So we need to have like a process entity function. So public void process entity. And it's going to take in the entity that it wants. So mod model entity uh, entity. And so what this does is it basically goes through this map that we just created. And it sees if this specific uh, entity is actually in it or not. If it isn't, then it adds another list to it. And then it puts it, it puts the entity in that list. And if the list is already there, uh, then it just adds it. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to get the list to see if it's there. So the first thing we need to do is get the textured model because we need to um, get the exact model. So... We need to do textured model. So that's going to be a uh, model. And that's going to be turned to entity uh, dot. And then once it all loads, uh, get model. So with this, now we can get the list from our map. Because a map is just a, basically a 2D array. So now we need to get, um, uh, what is it? List of model entities. And we're just going to call this uh, entities again. And so now with that, uh, we're going to say um, uh, this dot entities uh, dot get and then use our model that we used up, up uh, here. So what this does is it uses the entities model to get the list from the map. So it basically is like a dictionary and it uses the model as the key. So now we need to test if this uh, if this entity uh, array actually exists. So we can use a simple if statement say if entities is not equal to null saying that it actually exists then all we need to do is add entity to entities. Uh, so we need to do uh, entities if I can spell add and then whatever entity entity. Okay so if yeah, it doesn't exist, then what we need to do is we actually need to create a list. So we need to say else, uh, we need to do a list of model entities. Uh, yeah, model entity, and we're just going to say new uh, in list. And then we need, to, we need to set this equal to array list, and then have this. And then obviously import it. And so with new list, uh, now we need to actually add the entity into the new list. So new list dot add uh, entity. And then after we added the entity to the list, we need to add the list to the map. So we need to say, uh, what is it called? Entities. Or this dot entities because there's a local entities uh, dot uh, put uh, a texture model which will just be uh, what is it uh, model and then the value which would be new list so now we have a way to actually put entities into our map now we need to change this render module model entity to where it actually renders all the entities in that so since we're rendering a map we don't I'm just going to change up the name just say render and uh, now we're not rendering a single model, we're just rendering the entire thing. So now what we need to do is we need to actually iterate over the entire map. So we can do this by doing for 
uh, textured model because that's the key textured model uh, model in the entities if I can oh, complete dot uh, key set which will just get uh, all the textured models in the um, map so after we get this now uh, we can actually use the model to get the each array so um, and then we just say a uh, list of model entity yeah model entity uh let's just say list and that is going to be set equal to uh entities dot get and then the key which is obviously going to be one okay so now we can actually iterate through the entire list so for uh model entity uh, let's just say entity entity in list and that is the basic layout so now we can turn this we can use all these functions oh, excuse me and put it inside this uh, for, these double for loops so the first thing we need to do is we need to bind each entity so we can do that by just uh, using this and we're putting this uh, after we have the list or before we have the list and so with this now we can say um, uh, model instead of entity docket model so model docket vertex array and then it enables it and then it gets the uh, model entity list and we need to put uh, this in wherever it is there it is there's the end of it and so it we put this into the for loop because each entity has a different uh, transformation matrix and then they may have uh, different textures because actually no they won't have different textures because it's the same texture model okay so now we can put this after the listed for the not after the second for loop that's what I'm trying to say so just erase all this white space and put that in there so if we give this a run well actually we have to change uh this up so instead of rendering a single entity we need to do it before we actually need to add the entity to the map before we start the loop so ren render dot uh process entity crap process entity and then entity and then after that we can just say render and it should be the same but it should be more effective so press play so as you can see here we still have our uh, uh, entity but it is the same exact thing but if for instance we have a thousand of them instead of binding and then unbinding uh, a thousand times it should only do it once and then that's it and then it just renders a thousand cubes instead of uh binding rendering and unbinding a thousand times it only does uh, uh binding render a thousand times and then unbinding and that's way more efficient so uh yeah that's it for uh, this tutorial the next tutorial i finally should be able to get uh the OBJ like not oh well the asymp working because asymp is one of the complicated parts of 3D lightweight Java game library because it has so many things that you need to do. So anyways, that should be it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, of course, asymp should be ready to go. And yeah, so uh bye.